Hey everybody, it's Evan. With the embargo lifted, I can go a little bit more into Splatoon 2. You know, try to give you guys a little more information. Starting with a quick recap of single player. Now, I've already given most of my thoughts on this in another video. It was only about five minutes. We'll probably just have it in a link somewhere. You can go check that out if you're so inclined. If not, okay, real quick. Splatoon 2 at its core is certainly a multiplayer game, but the single player is not a thing that just feels like it's been tacked on just to fill time. The levels were certainly thought out, the difficulty ramp felt completely smooth throughout the entire experience, it's a great way to learn the weapons on your own, the boss fights felt very unique, and the whole experience showed me that the control scheme in Splatoon 2 would be perfect for any game in the genre, as well as teaching me some of the more advanced features that Splatoon 2 has to offer. With that being said, I'm going to move on to the actual multiplayer experience, because all that stuff is well and good for single player, but we really need to see how it translates into a multiplayer environment. I mean, that is the whole reason for this game to exist. Splatoon 2 isn't something you're going to be completely happy with just running through a single player mission over and over. And Nintendo managed to make that aspect of the game both clear and simple. The third person action shooter genre isn't exactly new to me, and the more I think about it, it is one of my favorites when it comes to competitive play. But looking back at the dozens of games I've played in this style, none have really had the nuance that Splatoon 2 brings to the table with its multiplayer. Right from the beginning of signing in, I'm given an overview of what to expect in the multiplayer at that one moment. This is fed to me through Pearl and Marina, through a short little in-game news skit. In games like these, that stuff isn't necessary, but it really shows that Nintendo understands that it's actually kind kind of nice. It's a way to pump the player up and get them ready for the games to come. And it certainly pulled me squarely into the mindset of the game, making it immediately stand out. And this got me excited for my first match ever in the Splatoon universe. And as a new player, the game tosses you into turf battle. Splatoon's unique take on an area control map. It was awesome. Even with the feeling that I had to adjust my controls for player versus player, which was annoying seeing as how I found no way to do that in the actual match. And even without prior knowledge of how the weapon and sub-weapon system worked in multiplayer, still it was just beyond fun to play. The maps felt both balanced and varied, and I liked how they would cycle over time during the day. It didn't take long for me to level up a bit and start getting new weapons, and I didn't feel it all weak with the starter set that you get right away. By the time I even got into the game, there were already level 10s running around, all wielding their weapon of choice, and yet I was still able to hold my own. Now I can take this as the game being fairly balanced, or I can take into the fact that I am starting starting to play this alongside all these people, so we're all kind of around the same level, and the gear that we're wearing isn't exactly all fine-tuned to our playstyles, and the reality is a new player coming in a year down the road might not have as easy a time, or maybe not. Balance like this can only really be seen over the course of a longer period of time, though I will have to say I'm not a huge fan of the kind of paywall content type stuff like this. Having to spend in-game time to gain currency to then buy a weapon that maybe you actually want. Normally I don't really like this, but in Splatoon 2 it doesn't take that long. A few games in and I already had the charging rifle that I wanted, so it just didn't feel like too big of an issue. I just regret not being able to spend enough time in the game to get to the point where I could buy the minigun. I was really looking forward to letting loose some of that in multiplayer. Which also means I didn't get to the point where I could queue for the ranked mode. I am kind of sad about this, but at the same time, I did notice a lot of level 10s floating around in Turf Wars. And they all seem to have the same name, which tells me at this point in time during the preliminary showing of the multiplayer that there weren't enough players to really queue for ranked at that exact moment. I was really interested in ranked though, with how smooth Turf War was, I really wanted to see that play out in a different type of game setting. For the uninitiated, ranked consists of three different modes. It's no longer just about how much ink can you spread around. You've got Splat Zone, a Splatoon take on King of the Hill. By covering a certain section of an arena in your team's color, you gain control of it and subsequently earn points by holding it over time. They added a HUD element for this to make it a little bit better than the version that came out on the Wii U. You'll also be looking at tower control, where each team is tasked with trying to push a payload into the enemy base. The core difference this has from its predecessor is the new checkpoint system. The payload actually stops now for a little bit, allowing the enemy team to set up for ambushes. And the final ranked mode is known as Rainmaker, a package delivery map where a player picks up an extremely powerful weapon and takes it slowly towards the enemy base. Originally this weapon would create extremely powerful tornadoes, but now it acts a little more like the BFG 9000. A little bit of a delay, but a pretty big explosion. I really did want to check these out as they all seemed pretty fun. Sadly the timing just wasn't right. And besides, John and I had to take a crack at the new Horde mode, or Sam and Run as the game calls it. Completely new to the Splatoon universe and a welcome addition for those who seek something a little more 
more than just 24-7 PvP. And with what we've played, this new mode is completely packed with everything you would expect a modern day horde mode would have. Enemy variety, unique mini bosses, currency collection, and specialized maps. And to make it stand out, they added a system of loaning weapons. That is to say that the weapons you have access to come from a very specific list and they're even given to you in the game at different times. A great way to keep you on your toes. This is a mode meant for four players and cooperative. You can go in with less, but we don't recommend it. It does feel like without proper teamwork, it is very easy to get overwhelmed. And Sam and Run fits perfectly into Splatoon 2's online mechanism, with a monthly unlockable piece of gear as well as a daily food ticket, which can be used to increase the speed of leveling on the competitive side. It gives you sufficient reason to at least take a crack at it once in a while, you know, mix things up. And all of this, the Turf Wars, the Ranked Mode, Sam and Run, and even the upcoming League Battle, it's all built around a core gameplay that feels great. Responsive controls, an online service that through both wireless and USB wired felt smooth constant and unwavering frame rates, a unique take on common competitive themes, customization allowing you to trick out your character, and from what I've seen watching the World Inkling Invitational, enough functions built in to allow a competitive scene to grow easily. I only have two real moments of salt with this game. One is minor. I don't like that you have no ability to change your sensitivity during online play. That sounds very patchable. And even if it isn't, after a while, I will eventually come to the controls that I like, and I won't have to change it anymore anyway. And my other gripe doesn't even necessarily have to do with the game so much as what Nintendo's been doing with its online play. If you've been living under a rock, you probably haven't heard that the current way that Nintendo plans on bringing voice to their games is by having it run through an application that would have to be used on another device. This makes the Switch the only modern day console that requires you to use a secondary electronic in order to use features that are considered commonplace on all the other consoles. Through my playtime in Splatoon 2, I felt that this game wants to be competitive, but as most competitive players will tell you, talking to their teammates is usually key to being able to win, and the games that have this function built in tend to be a little more respected in that scene. Well, hopefully when it's released, Nintendo realizes the app is truly an error in judgment and brings all the functions into the Switch. Or maybe the guys over at Discord will figure something out. So I think I have to come to some kind of conclusion here, I guess. How about, is this game worth buying? 60 bucks for an online third-person action shooter on the Nintendo Switch. That almost makes it too easy. Do you own a Switch and are you even remotely interested in competitive gaming? Then yes, this is a day one purchase, absolutely. If you don't already own a Switch, should you go on an epic quest to find one because of Splatoon 2? I'd certainly consider it one of the reasons. If you love games like these, don't forget you also have Rocket League coming up in the near future, putting the Switch well on its way to becoming a portable competitive machine, which as Spawnwave's resident esports guy, I'm really beginning to love. Just please, Nintendo, integrate the voice. Thanks for watching, I'm Evan, see you next time.